right, so we're going to keep learning some more about CSS selectors. And the next thing we're going to talk about is specificity. Uh, I love this lecture because of all the fun words. There's combinators, and then even better than that is specificity. So specificity is a term that uh, relates to um, deciding who wins, right? So let's say that there are two rules that both match an element. Uh, so this says, hey, I want all H1s in the page to be blue, right? So this is Mr. Blue. And sure enough, you know, there's a match for this H1. Um, and then there's a competitor that says, I actually want this this one to be red, though. And, and so it turns out that this fight, red would win, and so red would get this. Um, but how does this process work of, like, when there's conflicting rules, um, how do you decide uh, who gets the win? So we're going to kind of go through a number of examples uh, and just kind of talk about how the browser decides what to do. So the first thing that you have to understand about a browser um, is it has a bunch of rules called the user agent rules. Uh, that's just the term that, that they use for the browser picks it. And so this is the browser's default. So for example, the fact that this is, um, you know, whatever font this is, it looks like it's a, a sans font, that was picked by the user agent. Turns out that if you load an H1 on a different browser, it might display entirely differently. H1 is a fun example because if you load an H1 on an iPhone, it uses like a, a script font, which is crazy. Um, and it picked black. I mean, it just makes all these choices for you behind the hood. So even if you have no rules about style, so this is just no rules about style, you're getting a bunch of stuff. Um, and it's coming from that user agent. I just wanted to point that out, right? There are, by the way, some people who, whenever they make a page, they have a CSS file where the top line, it's literally like hundreds of characters long, and it's to reset all of the defaults uh, so that it behaves the same on no matter what the browser is. And you can look online for people that do things like this, but it's just, just like a clear that's at the top of the CSS file. And you can see a lot of people choose to do that to avoid different user agent decisions. So let's go ahead and start actually making rules. So the first rule that I want to kind of uh, mention here is let's say that we have a rule for info. So anybody the class info, it's going to be red. Um, and then, you know, later we have essentially the same uh, level of priority rule that says, hey, it's going to be blue. And it turns out that if you look at the result, uh, it's blue, right? So the first rule that I wanted to mention is if things have the same, like, weight or if it's the same type of rule, whoever is last wins. And this actually is important. So let's say, like, you're using a framework like Bootstrap and you load their stuff first and then you load your stuff second. If you make a rule and they make a rule, your stuff will win right, which is, is maybe what you want, which is nice. So uh, that's rule number one. Uh, there's a lot of rules coming. Uh, is that last first, or last wins. Uh, I also wanted to point out the fact that these rules um, are independent, right? So each property has this own decision making that happens, right? So just because this, uh, the second info comes later than the first, it's not like everything in here happens and nothing up here happens. It actually is specifically like, all right, for color, uh, what color should I be? I have two rules that match. The last one says I'm blue. Uh, this one uh, doesn't get used at all. By the way, the Chrome Dev tools are really good at showing you, like on the side, what all rules matched um, and which one it chose to use. What the heck, I've actually got this. So if you go look, if you want to, um, you can go look in the code used in lecture and you can see that this one was called no conflict. I can actually just go ahead and open this up. Uh, I'll just open it up in, a, uh, in the system editor. And so what I was saying here is if you wanted to right click on something and say inspect element, uh, I mean, these Chrome dev tools are just amazing uh, at figuring out all the details. So you can see that like, if I look at this H1, uh, I can see on the side that it matched this info, it matched this info. And you can see like it shows you this red just struck out um, because it didn't get used because instead the blue got used instead. And you can see this background color yellow it lived on because there was no conflict later. Also, just to mention, I mean, you can totally modify things uh, inside here. So if I uncheck it, you can see that red wins then. If I uncheck it, then it just doesn't have that rule. You can also do all kinds of crazy things. So, like you can change the color right here. Uh, and you can play around with different things. Like when it comes to, to CSS, learning these, these Chrome Dev tools is just huge. And so like really getting good at this stuff is, is really important. All right, I digressed. Uh, so I wanted to say that uh, properties are all independent, which is just crazy if you think about what all the browser is doing so fast uh, to make these web pages visible. It's really pretty cool. Uh, next point I wanted to make is that it's not that last just wins. Uh, so here you can see I've got uh, an ID uh, and then also a class. Um, 
and this one, which is an ID, an ID is considered more specific. Um, and so you can see that, yeah, sure, there's things later, but ID defeats title. This is actually a point we're going to talk about quite a bit. Uh, so, for example, in this one, we're just showing that ID defeats title. Um, but it's not like there's anything sacred about ID. Uh, so here we've got an ID that says it should be green. Uh, then here we've got another element, uh, which has an ID and a class uh, and a tag. Um, and really, it's if something is more specific, it wins. So you can see that this is magenta for a reason. So this follows a whole elaborate set of rules uh, referred to as specificity. Uh, so let's just start talking about what the rules are for deciding how specific is an item. The best way to talk about uh, specificity is through their rule system. Uh, this rule system is a little lie, but we'll get to that. Um, and the way that you do it is you add 100 points for every ID, 10 points for every class, and then one point for tag, so it's kind of the least specific, so it gets only one point. And then if things happen to be a tie, then whoever's last wins. So here we've got an ID, uh, so you can see that that's 100 points. Uh, here we've got a single class, and then we've got another single class. So those are both 10 points on the specificity scale. And this one is, um, it's got one ID, which is worth 100, one class, which is worth 10, and one tag, which is worth one more. Uh, so this one is the winner because it has 111 on the specificity scoring system. Um, and so this text is going to be magenta. So let's let you go ahead and do some examples. I'll do one with you. So we're doing the first three. It's what's the number of points. Uh, so this has a class for 10, uh, a tag for one. So the answer to this one is 11. See if you can answer the others on your own. So just go ahead and pause the video. See if you can finish answering these questions. All right, so I'm going to do it with you. Uh, so this one has an ID, which is 100, and then a tag, which is 1. Uh, this one has all kinds of things going on. Um, so, I mean, let's just kind of look for it. So it looks like I see a class and a class. So it's kind of the middle digit. Uh, I see one ID, so there's one of those. And then I see a tag, a tag, and a tag. Um, so that one's 123. And so if we wanted to make a 121, we'd have, um, you know, a single ID. Uh, we'd have two classes. Um, and then we would have one um, tag. So you could make a specific example for that if you wanted in this space, but I, I chose not to bother. I think you get the idea. The other things that I wanted to mention is that there's more to life than just specificity. Um, so this one has uh, a lot of big rules for magenta and then very few for red. So you'd say, ah, oh, this is going to clearly be magenta. Uh, but then you look at it, it's like, hey, that's not magenta. It's orange. Uh, so why, why is it orange? Um, and if you look down here, you can see that there's actually um, inline CSS in addition to in addition to the embedded CSS up here. Um, and the important thing is inline wins, right? So if it's on the attribute, um, it doesn't matter what your specificity is in an embed or an external CSS. Inline defeats you. And this is actually handy because sometimes JavaScript wants to do specific things at a specific time. And if it wants to, it can just write the style right into the inline, and it'll just win. And it just doesn't care about specificity. Now, that's mostly true, and that used to be how it was for a while. Um, but that kind of made the CSS people mad because they're in charge of the style sheet. And so they developed another thing, which just makes me laugh, um, called important. Um, so there's another thing you can do now, um, which is to add bang important. Uh, onto one of your rules as a CSS developer. It's kind of weird where it goes, right? So it goes like right after the value, before the comma even. Um, you just add an exclamation point and the word important, and then you win. <laughs> so if you don't want to mess with uh, specificity, you don't want those JavaScript people messing you up, if you put bang important on something, you, you just win, right? And to be honest, if multiple people, this is the question I always get, what happens if more than one people put, put bang important? Um, specifically, uh, the standard says it's undefined. Uh, so you shouldn't do that, right? It's like you should only have one ID on a page. You should only have um, one thing that's marked as bang important. It will choose to do something, and it might be reasonable, uh, but you shouldn't do that. So bang important is like the top of the pyramid. Uh, if somebody adds that, just what it is. No other, no other questions asked, and it should be unique. 
let's also talk about the bottom side. So we've kind of like, you know, this is more important than this, this is more important than this, this is more important than this. Let's talk about other things that defeat uh, user agent. And there's really only one that's on the bottom side, um, and that is inherited properties. So text, as we mentioned, so this is what you would get with just the user agent. Uh, but if you, you set on the body that it was violet, um, that actually, so you actually set it on the body element here. Since it's a text property, it trickles down into all of its children. Um, and you can see that th this becomes violet as well. So if we wanted to say, what are the actual factual rules uh, for deciding what something is going to be, it kind of looks like this. Uh, first and foremost, if something is marked as important, it just wins. After that, if something has inline CSS, that just wins. Like, there's, no, there's no debate, right? Assuming that those are not present, uh, then you go into the specificity scoring system. Uh, so you have IDs, classes, and tags. Oh, I forgot to tell you what the lie was. I've got to go back and tell you about, about the little lie. We'll get to that in just a minute. Um, and then if those are all ties, then it's whoever last wins. If there are no matches at all for an element, um, then what happens is if it's an inherited property, uh, that will win. And then if there's just nothing at all, it'll use the user agent. Let's talk about this lie. Somehow I zoomed past the slide earlier. So the specificity point system lie. I just kind of missed the slide. Um, so here we've got, um, so pretend that there's an element on the page that matches this. So it's got the ID, some ID. It also, for no apparent reason, has 12 classes on it. Uh, I just call them A through L, just to keep it simple. And we've, uh, with the ID, said that you should be red. And we've said with 12 classes that it should be blue. So if we were to actually like score these things, um, one of them has a score of 100. So it's got a one score of 100 here uh, because it's one times 100. And then the other has 12 tenors, uh, which is 120 points. So who wins? Uh, read the title of the slide, right? So it turns out that the scoring system is a simplification. Really, it's um, how many IDs do I have? If that number is different, if there is an ID on one, there's not on the other, the one with the ID just wins. Um, so you can't actually have 10 of something and, and leapfrog up to the next goal. So uh, I just wanted to, to tell you about their lie here. Um, ID beats class uh, all the time. It doesn't matter if you have 12 classes, ID still beats classes. So that's the, that's the little lie. All right, so I think that's kind of the uh, the main point I wanted to make here. I think that this slide right here is the main take home message of figuring up how a property uh, gets decided upon. And keep in mind that for every property that there is, there are a lot of properties. It has to go through this for, for everything, which is crazy how fast it works. All right, so that's it for this time. Uh, you should hopefully know who wins in a fight now. Uh, see you next time where we talk about some advanced selectors.